This week we're going to see the best design for a bird nest box that we've been able to figure out in 25 years. Stay tuned. So we've had several rounds of nest boxes, different designs, mostly recycled wood. This I remember was from a fence that was taken down and we recycled. So these are getting old. There's some details in the design of this that I don't like, but I just didn't know as well. One, it's important that the bottom be recessed within, within the edges and not tacked on to the bottom. That was a big difference. These bottoms now rot a lot less than they used to. And we've since changed. So this you'll see is chamfered or angled. The bottom here is angled when we cut it so that we get a real drip edge. You see there's a little bit of it there, but that's important as a water drop comes down the side, it gathers here and then it drips. Cause if this is flat, or if you cut this flush, cause it's easier to cut, the water drop will come around and often then go and capillary action will soak in. So little details, but make a big difference. It's also nice to always open from the same side. Most of our nest boxes now are right side opening. So we come to the nest box. We know that this is the, this is the screw that will make that it opens from this side. We have two screws, one here and one on the back. Is this one? Oh, this one isn't. This is a, this is actually a left side opening. <laughs> no, it's not. How do we open, open this one? Gee, don't even know how, how this one gets opened. We have some old ones that we used to take the top off. Uh, the, the key is to try to standardize. This is not a, definitely not a standard. A few features that we tested over the years that we really like. One is a big overhang. That's really nice because you really reduce the chance that water gets in the top inside through the hole. So that's nice. And the other little design feature is make the roofs just a bit bigger than the nest box. So that makes that much less chance that water gets in right there. So those are two features that uh, we, we always tend to do now. So over the years, we've modified them. Let me show you another one. This is one of the most recent one. This is the last batch we made. So it just so happened we couldn't have, we didn't have boards wide enough to overhang on the side, but we could overhang the front. We did do the chamfered edge. All of them are angled. So there, here it's angled. Let's see if you could see that from here. So that one is angled. This one is angled. And then these are all caught in the string here. These are all right side opening. Uh, even things like this angle, that one was actually put on, cut wrong, should have been cut this way. So sometimes when you're producing them in quantity, you do make mistakes. Again, the idea of having all the holes on the same side means you don't have to look around where they are. So that's a nice little feature. So just to show you that break our own rules. Some of these are left opening, some are right opening. Just a few of the features. Uh, in this case, this was recycled fence boards, the red ones. And it's very important. Oh, peux tu juste le rouvrir? Jasmine, j'ai oublié de montrer une chose à l'intérieur. Just want to show you, forgot to show the inside. Uh, and I can show you with this board. We once, I once did nest boxes where I used this kind of fence on the front. And that was a big mistake because I had put them up and that same day I could hear something in a nest box scurrying around and I thought, huh, that's funny. It's, it's scurrying, but it's not coming out. And so imagine there was the hole here. And what I realized was this is too slick. And the bird trying to grab couldn't grab to get out. 
So what I had to do was I had to gouge the inside of the boards to make it rough so the bird could actually claw to get out. So what we do on these is we used recycled fence boards, but we used raw, this is a raw cut, not planed pine. And so you see it's, it's quite, it's quite rough and it's not a problem for the bird to grab on to climb out. So whatever you use, make sure if it's planed wood, make sure you rough up at the entrance. Some people tack on a little piece of hardware cloth that works too. But you want something, imagine a little ladder that's very easy to climb out. Otherwise the bird actually can get trapped and die in the nest box. And you don't want nest boxes to become traps. So make sure that if you're using smooth wood, you keep it to the sides, the back, the top, but not the front. The front you want to be the roughest piece of wood you can get. The key for a long lasting nest box is to have it dry inside. So you see that one is really dry inside. That's that's really nice. We want them dry. They a little bit of stain because hey, it does happen. But it also, this one had been used at some point. You can see the uh, the staining from the birds' droppings, the young droppings. This one is a bit tight. So I really like this. Was a really nice design. We just didn't have enough wood to do them all this way. Another little feature, so that's filling up and then closed. Another little feature that makes them work better is overlap the back lip here. In fact, that one should have been flipped the other way. The edge should have gone this way. There's angles and cuts, but that makes that little overlap prevents water as much from getting in there. I'm a stickler for little details because details is what makes if you're going to do the effort of putting a nest box and you get an extra 10 years of life out of it, that makes a big difference. Did you talk about this also? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can find, I don't even think we have some of the really old ones that the bottom or the floor was tacked underneath. We'll go see, see some of the other models. And so that's it. So, so just going from one to the other try to organize a logical route. So in this case, we have the nest boxes tend to be on posts that, that are in a row. And so just zigzag through the orchard, going one row, doing these, going to the next series there and walking through them. And Small ones, let me show you real fast. About this size. So three inch and a two inch screw. And always the same, just show, just see one. If you're in the US, always use Robertson head or square head so that when you put it on your drill, the screw can actually hold. Let's see if you can just put it on the end of the, the put it on the bit. It's really nice that when you put it on, let it go, it will stay. So that is so helpful when you're dealing with things like nest boxes and you're having to put in screws without them falling. I must say those green ones are a little better right now than brown ones. Little details, but we do have brown screws, but the green ones are nicer because if they fall on the ground, they tend to be a little easier to see than the brown ones. Yeah. Uh, they both Ideally, they'd be fluorescent orange, but you do want to be careful because whatever you drop, you'll tend to find with the tractor tire some point in the future. So here's some of our collection of broken nest boxes that are waiting to be repaired now. Some beyond hope and others uh, just have one piece or so to repair. One of the most useful things over the years we found to be able to use wood effectively is to have a template of each nest box and the jigs. So this would be even the jigs, which means these would be the jigs for where we drill holes. And what happens is as we're doing a project and we have scrap pieces of wood, we keep all the scraps and then we can take even a small scrap and say, oh, we can make the floor for a four by four wren box. So this has allowed us to really not 
there, there's really no waste of wood here. And by having this, as we cut pieces, we just put them in our stockpile and they're ready to go next time we do an assembly round for the different nest boxes. So we have here our, our template pieces for kestrel, which are really big. So we don't often have scrap pieces, but if we're cutting a big board, we will have some, some uh, template piece or kestrel nest box pieces. Very handy, have templates and never, never use them to assemble them. Oh, I just want to put up one more. Don't do it. Keep the template separate. So that's it. You saw how to maintain the nest boxes and the details for a good design. I'll put the plans for these nest boxes in the, the link for the plans below. And just get started. Now still the time. Usually by early May you want to have your nest boxes up as much as possible. In our climate, certainly if you're farther south. But there are second nests as well. So get doing. This is the time. And if you miss this year, hey, put it on the calendar for next year. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the Permaculture Orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the details of nest box design in the best one that we've figured out in 25 years. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.